You'll be excused if you have a feeling of whiplash after all the time jumps of season 1 of House of the Dragon, but with the penultimate episode, episode 9, we jump straight into the aftermath of the king's death. We've seen in the past when an integral character dies in a film or TV show like Dumbledore for example, and the whole uh, setting just becomes gloomy and overcast. And now that same situation applies to King's Landing. And we see Alison meet with a council following her husband's death, with all these new responsibilities on her shoulders, and we find out that they've all been plotting for Aegon's ascension to the throne all this time. Well, apart from Beesbury, Beesbury was still true-hearted and had his say, but then got destroyed by Kristen Cole, who I bloody hate, by the way. I think Kristen Cole is such a pain in the ass of a character. I just, oh, I bloody hate that guy. And fair play to the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard because he didn't want to get involved with all that scheming. He didn't believe Alicent's trust me bro statement about King Viserys. So he was like, screw you guys, I'm going home. Since the major time jump and the change to Olivia Cook as the actor, the character's really come into her own a bit more. And now with the king being dead, she's got to make those big decisions, but she's got Otto you know, behind her you know, wanting to dictate her still. But as we see in this episode, Alison firmly understands how her father treated her when she was younger by making her basically a chess piece on a chessboard which she willingly moves around. So now comes the difference of opinion where Otto wants to kill Rhaenyra and Daemon to stop any potential war, whereas Alison does not want to do so. A big issue though is that Aegon is currently missing, so Otto sends out the Cargill twins and Alison sends out Chris and Carl with Aemon. We learn that Aegon's been quite busy while out and about and is now even leaking children. We also see a meeting between White Worm and Otto where White Worm says she will reveal the location of Aegon if they agree to stop the child fighting uh, within the streets of King's Landing which is done for sport. They do eventually find Aegon but it was interesting to see how the cargo twins did respond to this because one of them was very up for you know, getting him but the other one was quite reserved. After a little brawl between brothers Aegon captures Aegon but Aegon is not very keen for the throne. I don't want it. I never have. While all this has been going on, Rhaenys has been locked in a room, not allowed to leave, because if she does leave, she'll tell Rhaenyra and Daemon everything which has happened. Alicent comes into Rhaenys' room at one point to discuss what happened with the king's final words, and also ask for her support for Aegon to take up the throne. As we saw earlier, Sir Eric Cargill was quite restrained when his brother captured Aegon, and we see here that he's not on board at all with the whole situation, and it goes to uh, Rhaenys' room to help her escape. Before we get to Aegon's coronation, we do have a scene with Alicent and Laris where Alicent gets her feet out on full show, so cue the Tarantino jokes. And as Alicent looks away, we see Laris start rubbing one out, and I thought, you know, how fitting it is to have a guy with a foot disability have a foot fetish. Back now to the escaped Rhaenys who's all hooded up, and she goes to Aegon's coronation, and we see that Aegon is starting to enjoy that feeling of bit, uh, attention and the actual feeling of being king. And you can tell that Otto's loving it as well. I love it when a plan comes together. Fortunately for Rhaenys, they're doing this all above the dragon pit, so she sneaks down, gets Maelys, and boom! Kills all those civilians. Boom! And this was a very spectacle scene. Like, some people might like it, some people might hate it. I mean, even the creators assume that some people might be questioning how this all came to fruition. She knows if she sets fire to that dais, she ends any possibility of war and probably sets peace throughout the realm. But I think probably doesn't want to be responsible for doing that to another mother. And that's a, it's, a, it's a complex choice and one that people might dispute or have a problem with, but that's the choice Rhaenys makes in that moment. Anyway, now on top of a dragon with her armor on, she gives a look to Alicent and co of, you know, don't mess with me, bitch, and then flies off to uh, Dragonstone. Now, she very well could have just flamed them all down there right in the spot, but I think with Rhaenys, she's a character we haven't seen so much of in this first season where I'm not completely sure of her intentions. Like, you know, I know she had a conversation with Rhaenyra and she supported Rhaenyra in the last episode, but I think a lot of that was down to her connection with Viserys than it was with Rhaenyra. And then she has a conversation with Alison as well in this episode. So it's like, I think that whole connection at the moment, we're not totally sure where she stands and whether she will actually would rather see these two people face off against each other. Also, a couple of little bits in the episode which I haven't mentioned was uh, White Woman's place gets set on fire, but there's no body shown, so we're assuming that that was an unsuccessful murder attempt. There was also a scene earlier on in the episode where Otto's in the throne room with all the lords. They will have to kneel down and swear their support for Aegon's ascension to the throne. If they don't, though, well, they get, uh, hmm. What? Why? No! I think it was a good idea having an episode surrounding Team Green this time around. The next episode, we'll have one around Team Black, so they're all in position, ready for Season 2. And I'm really looking forward to the finale to see how they all react to the news, and especially Damon. This wasn't one of my favourite episodes, considering what we've had earlier on in the season, but it's still a decently enough made episode. So with House of Dragon, I've been really enjoying it, but how about a show like She-Hulk? Well, on screen right now is our review for that one.